Hello everybody and welcome to yet another uh, webinar here at Avonic during the AV Show 2021. Excited to see so many of you join today. And uh, I can imagine because today an interesting topic, the future of education. Of course, this year's influence uh, of the global pandemic on the education market space uh, cannot be denied. It has had a, a significant impact on uh, the education market. Um, and normally there already are many applications inside of educational organizations, right? Hybrid learning, high flex learning, online, MOOCs, lecture capture. There normally are already a lot of applications inside of these organizations. But today we're going to be talking about the future of education. Uh, and uh, that's an interesting topic. And I'm happy to say that I'm not alone today. I'm actually joined by two guests uh, during the webinar. Uh, Andreas Hammerschmidt from ATEC Pro and uh, Piotr van Baalen from Kinley. Welcome, uh, welcome guys. And thank you so much for spending the time with me. Uh, Andreas, um, um, this is a quick introduction. You, um, uh, you're actually with uh, ATEC Pro, uh, our partner in Austria, and um, uh, you've been heavily uh, involved in a project in the University of Wiener Neustadt, who unfortunately couldn't make it today, so you're kind of standing in for them. Um, uh, can you explain the relationship with Wiener Neustadt? So, uh, hi, Stephen. Hey. Uh, we are a distributor in Austria for uh, Avonik and other manufacturers and we are working very close uh, also with end customers uh, when it comes to planning. Uh, so we provide necessary information and uh, help them to, to find their solution. So we are, we are always pretty close also with uh, universities. Okay, thanks for that. And Andreas, again, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, and also introducing uh, Piotr van Baarle, Global Product Lead for Education at, uh, at Kinley. Welcome, uh, Piotr. Hi, Steve. Um, could you briefly explain your role within Kinley? Yeah, of course. Um, my role with Kinley is uh, I'm uh, the product lead uh, on the education segment. Uh, Kinley is actually relatively new, uh, so not in the segment. We, they've been working uh, in the segment for 20 years already. Uh, but the segmentation within Kinley Global is uh, relatively new, so I'm going to define strategy on that and uh, and see where we're going in the future, and uh, you know, getting our products product portfolio ready for that. Okay, okay. Well, it's good to see kind of two angles of. Uh of uh, the current situation, one from uh, uh, truly the integration side on more of a global uh, global uh, perspective, and then Andreas is going to tell me tell us more about an actual case study inside of the University of Wiener Neustadt in Austria. So um, we're going to be speaking about that in uh, in, in depth in a while. Uh, uh, guys, we'll be back with you in uh, just a couple of minutes. Um, before we get started, just a couple need to know uh, things. Of course, today we are using the Demio platform. If you're not familiar to it, uh, there is a chat window available that you can use. Uh, we have uh, team members available in the chat uh, to answer your questions. And of course, we will also follow up on these questions uh, after the webinar. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat window. Um, and for the ones that don't know Avonik, just a very quick introduction about Avonik. We are a manufacturer of PTZ cameras based in the Netherlands, uh, founded about 13 years ago, and our background is in AV distribution. We are in charge of product design, manufacturing, warehouse, sales, and support, and we have a true focus on Pro AV installation. So basically, everywhere where a product needs to be integrated with uh, one or many third party uh, products or control systems or software applications uh, and also where uh, cameras are being used in situations where it's actually meant that they are not seen so where they need to blend into the environment uh, currently we have distribution in over 30 countries uh, worldwide so we're available everywhere uh, uh, and also if you want to know more about us you can visit our website avonic.eu um, just a quick introduction of some of the products that we have for education, just to give you a little bit of a feel. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, in education, of course, there is a current need for creating online content. The most basic way of that is using a, a webcam or using a more high profile webcam, such as a CM22, uh, a 4K video conferencing camera with USB 3.0 output, uh, means that you can get a higher frame rate through to your uh, application and especially for recording this is interesting and it also has a 120 degree horizontal field of view and the ability to zoom in and zoom out and deal with uh, low light conditions the cm44 we're also seeing going into education projects very often five times optical zoom uh, in the cm40 series we also have a 20 times optical zoom uh, option usb 2.0 
uh, cost effective and also controllable over IP. So again, for easy integration into control systems such as Crestron or Needs or AMX or all these type of uh, solutions. Um, and then our, um, our other products that fit well within the education space, uh, our CM70 product line of PTZ cameras, a, a line of cameras that look the same for three different models with 12, 20 and 30 times zoom within the same design. <coughs> Sorry for that. Uh, 3G SDI, HDMI and IP output. So these cameras really focus on providing a lot of installation flexibility and they have normal PoE. And that makes a big difference because it doesn't mean any external injectors or any other things you need to do or any ex more expensive switches because you can use any COTS uh, switch that is available. Um, it has a significantly improved low light performance because one of the things that is often forgotten is that not every situation at one of our customers is actually the same as where I'm standing here in this webinar studio with a lot of light. Most situations are low light conditions, so low light performance is very important. And we also offer a lot of different control protocols, including a full uh, HTTP API as well. For streaming applications um, uh, and, and uh, sending signals to lecture capture or streaming within the campus, uh, our RSC200 live encoder is a good option. Uh, the unique thing about this is that it supports as well HDMI and 3G SDI and is also coming up with uh, FTP functionality to be able to push files towards uh, lecture capture platforms as well. Uh, we're going to be announcing more about this uh, during the rest of the AV show, uh, but that's coming up very soon. So those are a few products we have for uh, the education uh, space. And if we talk about the education space, what are we actually talking about? Of course, lecture capture. I think most of us know what it is, right? There's a camera registration in the room. The teacher is walking. Uh, you can see the PowerPoint and there's audio being recorded, made available to the students online. Um, this is a common application. But especially these last few years, we've seen a lot of uh, momentum for uh, e-learning also before the pandemic, because e-learning was already offered for uh, adult education or evening education or education to students that are remote. MOOC, so Massive Online Open Courses, are increasing within universities, initially uh, mostly because of lifting the profile of most of the universities so that they can uh, wheel in more students, of course. Uh, but they've, uh, uh, they've, they've really went through the roof uh, this last year, of course, because it's a great way to keep yourself and your name out there. Then also conferencing. Uh, that's something that's going to be in the presentation that Andreas uh, will show as well. So conferencing as part of education. Of course, now colleagues or people are communicating over conferencing or students are being taught over conferencing products such as Teams or, uh, or uh, Google Classroom or other applications. Uh, but conferencing also plays another role inside of the actual curriculum that is brought in the actual uh, rooms. Of course, there's the media studies uh, that we have as well, where there's typically broadcast surroundings, uh, observation rooms where, uh, uh, where, where university studies behavior or maybe uh, uh, the response to somebody to user interfaces and those kind of things. And of course, the ceremonies, which are typically held inside of the larger rooms inside of the universities. There's kind of a link with lecture capture, um, uh, but, uh, and, and, but mostly it's done manually because there's, there's more things going on at the same time. So often it's a multi-camera registration. So these are some of the applications inside of organizations. Um, the biggest question I think for some of the organizations right now is really um, how, how do you treat all this content? Uh, I think uh, Piotr is gonna speak about that later on in his uh, presentation as well. Um, for now, I um, wanted to switch over to Andreas. Um, Andreas, I, I spoke about the application uh, within higher education. The, the interesting part, and that's also the reason why, uh, why we wanted to invite you to this, uh, this webinar, is that um, uh, we noticed that already started incorporated hybrid learning into their setup a while ago. Um, how long ago did Wiener Neustadt started looking at, at this, this new setup for their, for their classrooms? So uh, they were starting uh, 2016 with planning uh, the first rooms and they were uh, building the first rooms in 2017 and then the big rollout was uh, so right before the pandemic what is uh, quite interesting in this project that when the pandemic started they were pretty ready and fit uh, to, to face everything. 
the driving force was, of course, uh, it's an international university and they have uh, quite a lot of international students and, of course, international teachers, which is uh, a big value in, in, in teaching nowadays. So the initial force uh, to build all this was uh, somehow the other way around. So they tried to bring in international uh, audience and, and teaching. And so nowadays during pandemic, it's uh, more or less the other way around to bring their lectures out to the students. But so, so yeah. they started pretty early and were quite ready. Yeah. Yeah, I think this makes for an interesting uh, case studies uh, study actually at uh, at William Neustadt. Uh, you prepared a little presentation together with uh, with the university, so uh, we'll switch over to that, and then I'll uh, I'll leave it over to you, Andreas. Yeah, so we just uh, make a quick walk through uh, the technical setup. Uh, please keep in mind that this was all done pretty early, to two thousand seventeen. Um, we see here the, the audio path. So we have a microphone for uh, the teacher and we have two uh, video signals going to video matrix uh, from a PC in all the lecture rooms and the audio signal is de-embedded and also mixed to the DSP. That's quite straightforward and then to the audio system in the, uh, in the classrooms or in the lecture rooms. So say next slide. Uh, here we see the, the video path. So we have three video signals, two from the PC again to the matrix and the camera. Uh, so the live camera from uh, the lecture room and you can switch uh, to the uh, dual projection uh, all of these signals. So you can also switch the live camera live in the, in the lecture rooms uh, to one of the projections. If you want to show any detail and you have a huge audience, you can do that in the classroom as well. And of course, for the streaming participants or, or web conference participants, you have this detail as well out there. So the experience is the same in the classroom like for uh, out there. So next slide. Then we have a detail more or less. And uh, this was done in, in, in 2017 via streaming encoder and decoder. Nowadays, we can do this with the IP cameras directly. So there is a small confidence uh, video signal streamed to the control panel, uh, Creston in this case, uh, that if there is just uh, uh, the signal streamed out uh, to the internet, the, uh, uh, the teacher can see uh, his video signal on the small operating uh, touch panel. So next slide. Um, and there are two modes, so to say. One is the web conferencing. So with the PC, we have the uh, USB camera signal. We have the audio um, and we have also external content and we're going to the uh, web conference platforms, whether this is uh, Teams or Skype or Cisco WebEx, uh, doesn't matter, it's all running on the PC in the lecture rooms. So in the second mode is, uh, besides the web conferencing, is the lecture recording. So all the video signals and all the audio from the lecture room is going to a lecture recorder and from this lecture recorder to uh, Panopto, a platform where the students can uh, participate to the lecture, but also watch recordings. And in these lectures and recordings, they can choose from uh, all the signals. So they can take a closer look at the camera uh, signal, they can take a closer look to one of the video signals. So it is more or less uh, the same experience like when you're in the lecture. And this was a really important part that you have all the information and the same information than uh, uh, the people there in the lecture room do have. And this is all together and this is the reason why I didn't show it at once so <laughs> that you yeah. don't get complicated. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why this uh, video signal from the camera is split because it goes via stream in this installation to the uh, crest and it goes to the projection and it goes in this case via USB uh, to the fixed uh, PC there. So that's it more or less. This is an example of such a room. You see only a few participants here. This is our nowadays life. Most of them are at home or uh, as the initial uh, intention was also in international students uh, in their countries. 
So, and you have the two uh, projections you see, you have monitoring uh, up there that you don't have to turn around all the time. So, and this is uh, standardized through all the rooms. So you all, in each and every lecture room, you have the same installation. This was uh, really an important point that you don't have to adopt from room to room uh, to a different setting, which is very difficult for people and even, if the on in in the large venue where where events are held or so that there is more or less the same setup so you can if you can operate the classroom you can operate this setup there and this was also a quite important point so even if you're not at the venue you can do with this uh, an interesting part was uh, the labs so you might experience or in in other cases it's really difficult to do the the education you do in labs where you usually have hands-on and so uh, via web conference or via streaming. In this case, this was like you mentioned before, uh, an observation laboratory where the uh, students can participate in observations. Uh, the feedback was that it's much more better now with the streaming and much more in detail than it was before because a lot of students huddled there and it was quite stressy environment for them and now it's uh, it, so to say it can be the better way to do a streaming or a conference in this case yeah and that's again the example what a room yeah like. yeah andreas i i visited the uh, the university i think uh, i think last year shortly after um, after the installation was done uh, it's a very impressive uh, facility and uh, and also uh, the, 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 the thought process of the university was very interesting to hear. So thank you for this, uh, this overview. I've got, I've got a few other questions for you that we'll, uh, that we'll do during the panel discussion. Uh, thank you, uh, Andreas, for this, um, the case study at uh, the Fachhochschule Wiener Neustadt. Um, and that means we're going to switch over to, uh, to Piotr van Baarle from uh, Kinley. Um, Piotr, I also have a lot of questions for you, but the one I wanted to ask you related to this uh, PowerPoint we just see, is this, is this a typical setup you're seeing at your customers? It is. Um, so even before COVID, there were, there were a lot of customers with uh, hybrid setups, uh, the way that Wiener Neustadt is doing it. Um, I myself have been working, I mean, I've been working with Kinley only from January, January 1st, 2021, so I'm relatively new before uh, I've been working at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam, which is a Dutch university. Um, and we have been experiencing the same kind of demands. I mean, th those are the typical rooms we've been having from, I think already from 2009. Yeah. Uh, typical media site, Panopto setups uh, yeah. that we've been seeing used in hybrid education. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think one thing, one thing to add is that it's, uh, it, it, it's kind of tempting to just look at uh, the, the northern part of Europe. And uh, my experience is I, I used to travel a lot, now uh, less, uh, but there is definitely difference uh, between universities, southern part of Europe, if you go into Latin America, if you go uh, uh, the US, if you go uh, towards uh, the east. So there is a lot of difference. So in some situations, the lecture capture is just something that's, that's now being adopted. Uh, but nevertheless, we're talking about okay. the future of education. So, uh, Piotr, can you give us a quick introduction about Kinley and, uh, and Kinley's activities? Yeah, of course. So, um, yeah, as I said, I've been, uh, I'm relatively new at Kinley, but I knew Kinley, Kinley for a long time. Uh, they have experience for 20 years in the, uh, in the educational landscape already. Um, Kinley, I mean, kin is, of course, a pretty familiar word in English as well, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool that's derived from a Viking word. So that's something they would like. They like. They would like you to know. Uh, we specialize in the field of collaboration. They are the third largest uh, system integrator in the world, um, and they are starting to specialize in uh, in education, in government, uh, those types of markets. Um, I think what you should take from this slide is that we're global. So that's pretty important because what we try to do is we try to be, you know, the the the, the knowledge hub basically for our segments. So we gather the knowledge globally. Uh, so we've got a lot of clients, we've got a lot of officers in different, different countries. Um, and what's pretty important, and that's why I think they, uh, they hired me, is that uh, you know, they want the, the, the demand side expertise. So they want to know what's happening in the educational landscape, what is happening uh, towards the future. 
um, and that's really their goal. They're really, their goal is to collaborate together with universities. I mean, what you're seeing right now is that within universities, and as you say, within countries as well, everyone's you know, inventing their own wheel, basically. And what we try to do is gather knowledge and bring those no that knowledge to the, the, the institutions. I mean, not just universities, also the uh, higher education and different uh, other parts of education. Is the idea then um, to have some proven concepts, basically? Exactly, proven concepts, uh, ideas on the future, because that is very important. I mean, you want to be future proof. Um, but, you know, innovation is very important. And that's what I'm trying to trying to uh, explain. So, so we are really, uh, yeah, innovators, you know, we, we, we want to stay ahead, we want to know what's happening in the market, uh, and then work with you together to, uh, to get that across. And then uh, the next slide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So these, these are basically the fields where uh, we are uh, active in. Um, we are active in video communications, uh, audiovisual hardware, uh, collaboration tools, not just hardware, software, and unified communication. So we're recording uh, that type of thing. And then what's important to know right now is that we are currently focusing on a couple of markets, uh, the US, uh, the Benelux, uh, the UK, and Norway. Um, those are the, the biggest innovators for now. But of course, when we got all the markets up and running, then we can start sharing uh, with other parts of the world as well. All right. Uh, I think that's, cool. uh, in short, that's Kindly. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Pilter, for the uh, the quick introduction on uh, on Kindly. It's always good to know what the what the vision is and, and where you guys are. And, uh, and uh, I think you proved you're <laughs> you're definitely a global uh, global company. Um, okay, so um, I wanted to switch back to uh, the two of you um, because um, um, and, and and the idea is here to talk a little bit about the uh, the past, present, and and the future of the education market. Uh, if you look at uh, 2019, 2020, depends on where you were in the world where the, when the pandemic hit. But um, yeah, the whole situation with, uh, with COVID-19 uh, created the move to online and hybrid learning. It was kind of very challenging for a lot of educational organizations, right? Because they, they had, to, had to change almost overnight. So it wasn't the choice, but it was kind of, uh, they were obliged to do it. They had to do it because otherwise the students wouldn't get any information anymore. And we already talked about that it varies from country to country. Um, so there's huge differences in schools worldwide. Uh, I've, I've visited universities where I can still see overhead projectors being dragged around the corridors, to be honest. Uh, and, and some others are fully IP based and, and, and have cameras in every room. It's a, it's, it's a huge difference. Um, uh, Piotr, I wanted, wanted to ask you, as, as you as Kinley, you deal with, with multiple customers worldwide. Um, could you just describe what you guys have seen in the last well, probably 12 months uh, as developments in the market? Yeah, so um, of course, the, it's not really a problem of the technology, I, I would say. It's a problem with the curricula. So uh, there, is, there were people that are now not, so they're teachers right now that are not allowed to go into their schools or institutions, or they cannot have like 100 students in their classrooms. So. So they are, so perhaps in a lot of uh, Western universities, you, you got the equipment, for example, the recording uh, equipment, and you can do your conferencing, but the, cur the curricula are not really designed for that. So I think it was really, uh, it was a great problem for the, for, the, for, the, for the content side. And I think that's where we uh, supported them most. So not right now they had a, you know, had to go into a transition of, for example, recording from home. So they needed, uh, I don't know, endpoints in their home. They needed the webcams. They needed uh, that type of thing. Uh, but also on, uh, I mean, on location, uh, taking Erasmus University as another example, they had to transform. So it, first off, they first had larger rooms with the recording equipment. They had the smaller rooms with the problem-based learning, which is a nice term to also name, uh, that had camera equipment, but there were a lot of different rooms and they had to make them all prepared for this hybrid form. Uh, so they, they had a lot of work to do. Uh, so, and that's where we brought in our expertise, of course, as well. Okay, okay, clear. Thanks for that, uh, Piotr. Uh, Andreas, if, if you look at that, that transition that has been going on, uh, if you look at your customer, the, the Fogho Schulewine Neustadt, how, how, is, how did that transition go for them? Well, 
for them it was if you refer to the pandemic it was quite easy because they were ready of course there's a lot of organizational things to be done but technology wise they have been ready and this is not always the case so uh, Piotr if you say this started 2009 yes everyone knew how to do a Skype call and maybe each and every university had several online classrooms more or less but this massive rollout that you do the complete operation on a university uh, with streaming online guests online students uh, real students there so to say this is something completely new and um, of course universities are early adopters but still this was uh, challenging so and it still is so yeah and is it within within video know stuff that now all the rooms are equipped with with yes. camera solutions yes yes okay. even the labs and all the rooms and this is something which is new so and this will is taking place at others uni or other universities as well so they, yeah. they prepare now or have prepared that they shift completely their uh the whole lecture uh base to to an online platform as well of course you will move back somewhere but uh only a uh, part will move back i i think it will stay as an online offer for international I, I think I think that's what COVID did right it's it, it turned it into an overdrive right so the, uh, the it, it basically made everyone realize that oh right now we need that equipment in those rooms uh, because we need it for uh, in case we're not able to do it uh, uh, offline but I think that is good in the overall picture when you're looking at the uh, trends in education on a on a more you know, zoomed out scale. I mean, if you don't take COVID into account and if you're looking at an exit strategy. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's another question we'll, we'll, we'll get to. I, I think there is a, there is a, a uh, there's something to be said about the entire industry, right? Because we've, and I, re I remember installing the first IP based uh, video conferencing systems many, many years ago when this was something from the future, kind of the way how we look at a robot that would clean our house right now. Um, uh, and, and, and almost overnight, and I even saw this in my, in my personal uh, uh, the people around me, that almost overnight video conferencing and, and online streaming and, and all these type of things, they were accepted, they're, they're standardized. Uh, I think almost a week and a half ago, uh, one, uh, one of the two big uh, beer brands here in the Netherlands actually did an online version of their annual event, which is a huge event. Uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people go there. I think they had Two, three hundred thousand viewers uh, to these events. So, almost for, for for me, it feels like overnight this technology is is accepted. Also by the one watching, uh, which is which is likely the key. And in education, it's probably a little different because students were already uh, used to uh, video on demand and having their content everywhere all the time. Uh, but in general, for the whole market, there's been a huge shift, right? So. Um, uh, Piotr, one thing I wanted to ask you is, is because you, you guys work on a global um, uh, global scale, uh, when the pandemic hit, was it that your account managers weren't reachable anymore because they picked up so many phone calls? Uh, is it is it was it was it crazy? How did that go for you guys? Well, actually, when the pandemic hit, I was still at the demand side, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was of course. I mean, uh, there was a sudden run on all the. I mean, I think everyone. Even when you were trying to buy a simple webcam in a, on a website, uh, you couldn't get it, right? So, uh, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, of course, we've, we've also experienced that situation, although it's on the I control here now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so we talked a little about uh, about the transition, then the, the current situation. So, a mix between online and hybrid. For instance, we have a customer in Romania that actually built a system which was meant to be able to be in one room with only 50% of the students, to be in the other room uh, with another 50% of the students. And now it's moved, of course, back to fully online. Uh, for them, again, not by choice, but just because it was needed. And and, and like I said, we've we've seen some pretty quick projects I, I would I would kind of call them emergency purchases uh, where where something really needed to put in place fast um, wasn't really well thought of uh, uh, but just something to just be able to uh, next Monday we need to be operational because we need to transition to online learning um, uh, and, and some other uh, higher education so universities higher education but also uh, high schools they, they, they seem to be thinking more about, so, okay, how do we adapt to this new, hopefully temporary situation? Um, uh, and they, they seem to be taking their time to think about their best approach. 
Uh, Piotr, what I, was, what I was wondering is, is do you see your education's customer now, now look differently to new product builds uh, than they did before? Or have they, have they been changing like designs that they had in the past to adapt to the new situation? Mm, well, yeah. I don't know if it's really in the in the design of the. I mean, of course, everyone's looking towards the future, so they want to. So they had they needed something quick right now because that's. I mean, they need it right now, but of course they they have been asking us on our sites towards the future as well, so they could prepare for the their exit strategy as we were as I noted before. So uh, so. So yes, different than before COVID, I would I would say. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing one thing that 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 I experienced on our side, right, as a manufacturer, we've seen a lot of demand for USB cameras, uh, which were of course a quick fix, right? You can come in with your laptop and it's all fixed, and then you just put a table, and then you can you can record your your online lesson. Um, but some of the discussions I've been having with these customers also like, well, okay, you're you're kind of buying this USB solution right now. But what happens if we go back to somewhat of a normal situation. What is going to happen with this camera? Are they going to be piled up uh, somewhere in a storage room or are you going to be able to repurpose those? Uh, so those are kind of, this, that's kind of the trigger of this question, uh, to be honest. Um, uh, Andreas, if, if you look at, if you look at the, the Austrian market, eh, you guys are, are based in Austria, you are our, our partner for Austria. Uh, would you consider the, the, the market in general and the education market in, in, in a special early adopter of new technology? Um. Universities are, of course, early adopter. So, because innovation is their uh, the main topic. So, and like we see in Wiener Neustadt, they adopted early, even if it uh, it was in other universities as well a topic uh, how to reach external uh, teachers and so on. But uh, this large rollout. I think it's an early adoption and we see it also in, in other markets uh, that workplace changes as well dramatically. So people working from home uh, and they need access to data, to uh, their colleagues, uh, make meetings and so on. So these workplaces change as well uh, dramatically, um, but they, yeah, it's the same there. They had one or two rooms and now suddenly the, the complete staff uh, needs to work from home. So there is also a massive rollout. So it's between early adoption and, and this the overdrive mode. Um, but universities, of course, always had, uh, uh, were working together with other universities. And so there was, was always uh, this, this problem. Um, in, in other places like uh, events, this or, or culture in opera houses or so, if we take this into the discussion, I think there it was before that some did streaming, but it was uh, always something like, okay, a, a small add-on. So I'm, I think now it's the only thing we can do, but it will afterwards be again a small add-on. So I don't think that in workplaces and in universities we will ever pile up cameras because this will stay there. So yeah. it's <laughs> that makes sense. From yeah. early adoption to, yeah. to uh, consistent yeah. working there. Okay. Well, um, speaking about early adopters, and and Piotr, you also mentioned that that you mentioned uh, that that you worked for the Erasmus University. I think we can definitely call the Erasmus University an early adopter, right? You can. Okay. Yeah, I think they are the. I mean, also. So, so what is important, I think, to note is that, you know, these this, these technical innovations they are not to be seen without development of the of the of the on the content side, right? So. What the Erasmus University has been doing very well is they have been understanding that uh, forms like blended learning that they have to be part of the curriculum. So I mean that's what needs to happen first. They have to understand that you know we're going to use video in our education, whether it's hybrid or high flex, or they're going to use high production value video to add to the content. So they got you know different times, uh, more time to do different stuff on campus, for example. That type of thing yeah. and you know that's 
And, and what they have done very well is create a, a structure for that. For, so for teachers to basically come in with their content and go to, I mean, whether it's a, an online or an offline place. So they've got a specially built community, you know, for learning innovation, where they join up with either technical people or uh, didactical people to work on their content and see what's needed. So if AV is needed, if they need high production video, video, then a technician comes in or that was actually my part of my job. I was technical director. I came in and translated their content to, you know, uh, pro uh, video uh, products. And, and I think that is that is a big major difference between the Erasmus University and some of the other universities, you know, that they get that in place. And when you get that in place, then you can start to involve your uh, your technology together with that. Yeah. Yeah. I also think that that like the, 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 the communication between universities plays a big role in that. Right. Um, uh, I know for the Netherlands that there is a lot of communication between various universities. There's not a lot of competition internationally. Of course, there's competition between universities. So that changes the situation. Um, uh, kind of going back to the practical side, uh, Andreas, uh, in your presentation, you showed the, 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 the interface, the central control interface. Um, not to speak specifically about the control interface used, but why is this interface and, and kind of the, the user experience so, so important inside of education organizations? This is a really, really important uh, point in all these projects. Um, and it's difficult if uh, projects grow in time. So when you do your first room in, 2010 and then the next and so on. Uh, the advantage in Wiener Neustadt, right, it was all done and planned at once. So they could make this uh, operation and uh, uh, with the touch panel uh, and the surface unified to all the rooms. So if you know one, you know all of them. And this is really important because if a professor holds a, a lecture, he, he comes there and they are working partly in the industry, they're teaching somewhere else. But when they come there, they say, OK, I know this. Um, and no matter which room they enter, they know this. So this is a really, really important point that it's easy for them. Um, and it's in, in all each and every room, it's the same. So if it's the labs or the lecture yeah. rooms, it has to be the same. Yeah. And, and, and what I think we can all agree on, right, that even if, if we have the smartest people in the world teaching the class, it doesn't mean that specifically they can handle technology very well. Um, I, quite I've, the opposite, I would it's, say. It's quite the opposite. <laughs> so uh, the, 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 whole, the whole concept is to take all the technology away and make it uh, almost fully automatic. And that's not possible yet. We still need to have a touch, uh, touch panel interface, but uh, the idea is to take away all the technology yeah. and just make the technology work for them uh, instead of against them. Uh, but I do think we need to take into consideration that, that just the control and things that we, all three of us will think very normal and we can probably walk into a room, just press a button and everything works. Uh, it doesn't mean that everybody uh, thinks that way. Um, uh, thanks for that. Um, um, uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is, is the future, right? Uh, the biggest question right now is what's going to happen. We're in an online model in most countries right now. Some countries in a hybrid model. Um, uh, online uh, will stay as in, as in the MOOCs and the online learning, of course. So I don't think that's a, that's a question. But um, what is the situation about hybrid uh, teaching, right? Will we go back to the situation where it was in 2019, and I think uh, Piotr, that's a question I wanted to ask you. Uh, what is your view? Is, is is hybrid learning here to stay? Yeah, in, in my idea, it is. Especially, uh, um, of course, as I said, a lot of universities I have experience with they already were pretty much into hybrid learning. Um, but uh, of course, uh, so what's getting more and more and more important is the uh, as we spoke about before is the high flex part. So that not just so you got the hybrid learning. I mean, it's all always a bit of a scramble of definitions because uh, nobody actually knows what everything means. I think, and there's also uh, everyone in interpretates these uh, definitions in a different way. But I would say that hybrid education is just you get your uh, your, your 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 teacher on location, and he gives a class, and then people can uh, follow it through on a distance, right? That they, they can take a look at it live, either live or on demand, and then. But they still have to all go through campus, or they have to, uh, you know, uh, parallel to that, look at it online or use online uh, animations or video as an 
in addition to that, uh, that being on location. Um, but then you've got this high flex development, which says that basically that they can uh, can choose themselves. That, that uh, you know you like this this um, that that, that uh, the students can basically choose for themselves. So you can either do it fully online, um, and or you can do it on uh, on campus. And that is, I think, a pretty important uh, development because you need to. Again, it's not really in the techn technology; it's in the in the uh, development of your curriculum. You have to really develop something that that they can follow online or uh, on location, and that is where we have to, you know, uh, be flexible with our technology as well. In that in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I think I think, I think that there's kind of two sides, right, uh, on 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 the high flex uh, side. And and one thing I wanted to mention is kind of put this, the, the the way I look at high flex, it's kind of like a seamless user experience where it doesn't really matter if you're remote or on site. Uh, but also from the teacher's perspective, right, they need to be able to really see the remote students uh, and to be able to interact with them kind of seamlessly, which means more screens in the room, yeah. probably more camera positions. Uh, uh, basically, means more technology uh, and yeah. it also means that that while hybrid has a certain cost high flex will have a higher cost depending on uh, on what you select of course and i think then you kind of come down into how is a university funded and and there's a very fundamental difference in the way how universities are funded right there's universities in the world that are heavily relying on um, the tuition fees that international students for instance pay uh, and and they are now gone all right, so those tuition fees are not coming in because the students cannot come to that specific country. So I think really the funding behind that is a very uh, elementary uh, part of, of how universities look at that. Um, Andreas, yeah. uh, I kind of wanted to get back to you. Uh, hybrid learning, um, uh, getting back to the question, is, is hybrid learning here to stay? What, what's, what's your view on that? Yeah, it's, uh, if, if we just regard uh, Wiener Neustadt, it, it, the question is, is uh, not so good because they started before. So the, this was the plan to do it and the, uh, so the pandemic made uh, momentum to it, but uh, the planning was. So it will not stay there, it was the initial plan to, to offer hybrid le learning. So, but um, in, in other places, I mean, it's starting now uh, with the school kids, which uh, are entering the university then. They have seen now that hybrid learning or online learning or, uh, is, is possible and they know how to do it. And so when they enter university, they will be fully capable of following an, an, an online learning path in an university. So. I think uh, the, the pandemic also changed a little bit the generation. Um, so uh, when we entered university, we were not expecting to see anything online <laughs> or offline. So we were entering our lectures and if you missed them, they were gone. So this is changing completely, I think. Same counts for uh, uh, places. Um, and this but, but changed but forever. So the, 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 the offering of, of hybrid uh, lectures will, will be a demand as well, not only an offering by the universities. I think. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Well, I, I agree. I agree with you fully. Uh, Piotr, you wanted to uh, respond? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, exactly. So, so make no mistake, students prefer to be on campus. And um, that's my experience. And that's what we see also in the uh, in in all the, uh, the questionnaires uh, pop up, you know that they prefer to be on campus. But I think what you have to keep in mind is that we just we, that the curricula changes in a way that we incorporate this video into the the current experience. So so either it's through you know uh, lecture clips that they use as an addition, or I mean in the old days, right? You had these two hour long classes that uh, nobody would listen to after the first thirty minutes. Uh, and that's something you can change, you know, and that's what they're, that's, that's what COVID put into overdrive, this idea that video is essentially part of education. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, guys, we, we do need to uh, kind of crack on here. Um, um, one question I did want to ask you, and I think you've got something to share about that, um, uh, uh, Piotr, is the role that the IP transition is playing in, in education. I think there's a lot of there's of course a lot of marketing uh, terms and a lot of te technology terms that are being uh, tossed around all the time. Uh, but how do you see the, 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 the transition to IP influencing uh, educational organizations? Inflexibility. So 
first off, what you have to really understand is that before there were solutions and there were, uh, you know, that were basically that were bought because of their functions. So you got a you got Panotto or media sites, you know, that were there was a recorder that recorded a room and then it was sent to the cloud and then you got your video. What's getting more and more important is the management part. So where is this video going after it's been recorded? And, you know, can we be flexible? So the pretty important thing to take away from this, I think, for example, with your IP cameras, uh, with your Afonic IP cameras, is that they turn everything into a flexible network. So if you've got a camera that's on your, uh, perhaps you could show the slides there right now, which I, uh, yeah, wow, Amazing, technology. Right? Yeah, so this is a setup in a, in a typical room, right? Uh, I think uh, uh, it was shown before on the other slides at the deck. So mm -hmm. you've got your cameras, you've got some some type of uh, computer, either it's a laptop or a PC, and you got, of course, you want to hear it, so you've got mics. So in the, in the past, there was this, in every room, there would be a central recording device recording this. But the nice thing about AP, of course, is that you can just plug it into a network and then you can drop it wherever you'd like. So either you could even send all these signals directly to the cloud. So, so you, for example, our platform Beats by Kindy, it, it's, it's a platform in which you can uh, use all these sources in all these classrooms, drop them in the cloud, and then not even save them locally. I mean, uh, of course, for redundancy sake, sometimes you want to save them locally, but then you would just need one server in a room somewhere on campus to drop it then upload it to the cloud. But you can see the flexibility of that because you can even take a camera from a different room, plug it into your stream, and then you would, you know, this is all interchangeable. And that is, I think, a pretty cool development towards the future, uh, I would say. And that's where you come in, uh, I mean, with uh, Phonic as well. This yeah. IP flexibility is very important. Yeah. As well, we definitely we definitely have a clear focus on this kind of open protocol, open standard um, uh, IP streaming, right? So there's, you've got SDVOE, you've got JP2000 applications, and whatever, and and they work they work great as an alternative for a matrix switcher. But if you look at sending a a single to the cloud or to a lecture capture platform, the, the the delay, for instance, which is a key selling point of these other solutions, is not the main thing, right? Although there's a complete misconception on, on, on latency for H.264 and H.265. Um, I, I do think you had one more slide um, prepared as well, which kind of showed that integration, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the important part to take away from this, I mean, this is the integration with, uh, with the platform. So you've got the, the, the key thing to take away from this is that this could be just one guy sitting there, either it's with Kindly or a local on-site guy. <laughs> that can just you know schedule these rooms basically what we were talking about before that a teacher has to you know have a simple interface that he has, can just press a button and then everything works as planned uh, that's what you can do with this uh, system as well pretty easily so you can just schedule the rooms for recording they don't even have to think about it they just step in there they start talking and then you know everything is recorded into the into the cloud um, and it also makes maintenance pretty easy. Uh, easy. I mean, you can uh, get all kinds of information uh, from not just from your cameras, but also from all the other systems in the room that can just tell you. I mean, maybe it's too hot in the room, or maybe you know, you get all this information centrally. And that is, for example, also what the Erasmus University uh, does very well. They've got, just got one guy sitting on a help desk all day doing this stuff. And I mean, as compared to other universities in the Netherlands, for example, there were guys who were. I mean, they had 50 student uh, assistants rolling around mobile, recording devices to rooms. You know, it's, it's a lot of work and it's, it's very not redundant. And that's what, uh, what this IP really changes uh, in this, uh, to the system. Yeah. Um, um, kind of going back to Andreas. Um, um, Andres, what I do wanted to ask you is, is that while well, Piotr, as as the, the lookout from the the education perspective, US Atec have a have a more uh, uh, wider perspective, but then more uh, more locally. Uh, I know you guys have been doing uh, IP based projects. Uh, how, if you talk to customers, what's the what's the reason why they're moving to these IP uh, based systems? Well. I mean, there, there, there are two worlds still, so the classic AV installation uh, branch 
and uh, then everything which is proprietary in some way and not standardized. I think uh, there have been a few installations where they count on, in, in, in small parts on uh, H264 uh, uh, encoding and sending it to the network. But it was done for special tasks, so to say, but it was hardly ever the core of the whole installation. Um, what we have experienced is, of course, better encoding, faster encoding, smaller latency, uh, the quality of the video is better. And what I think is that uh, this is also a little bit on, I like this <laughs> overdrive uh, thinking, that we now think about, okay, we can could do this on, on H.264 completely. Um, and this is something, I guess, new. So, um, now we will see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's uh, I can definitely say we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of new projects being designed around IP, uh, either being an education, conferencing, or, or just traditional AV boardroom setup. So, uh, we're definitely seeing the increase and, uh, and and from a design perspective and a development perspective it's, it's a big focus for us uh, i kind of want to wrap it up guys because we've been uh, we've been going on for about 15 minutes already um i wanted to allow people to get back to work as well um uh, one question i do want to ask both of you uh, students today we all we already mentioned that right and we mentioned uh, students coming in from high school to universities uh, they, they are all used to having their content everywhere all the time available on demand every angle every piece of content everywhere um, uh, so they're kind of used to that how, how do you see this development or this play into future developments uh, of AV within education and I'll, I'll start with you uh, Piotr can you respond to that I mean as I said the uh, the um the managing of this content. So the content is being made at most universities, but the management of this content and the distribution of it is a, is a pretty important side. And that's what all universities are, uh, I mean, universities, high schools, they're all focusing on that right now on how to get this content, you know, uh, to the students, either through apps. Uh, I mean, there's been pretty extreme examples, uh, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a Netflix binge watch show to learn certain examples from, uh, from uh, from uh, you know from a master's degree that that type of thing, uh, and I think that's where the the big developments are for now. I mean for Kindly as well. I mean we, we want to standardize on the global level, right? We want these video platforms to help them uh, to help them manage this content as well. And your your IP cameras, for example. I mean, how if they're all interchangeable? Then in America we could use different cameras. Uh, I mean, we could, we could use your cameras, of course, as well, but, uh, Let's you know, everything's right. interchangeable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, uh, but uh, everything's interchangeable and that is, and that is pretty important in getting it to the students as well. So this management part, uh, and that's where you're going to see large development uh, as well. Okay. Uh, Andreas, what, what, can you give us your, uh, your, your vision on the, on the future? Uh, or do you have any, any statements that you want to make at the end of this uh, presentation? We are uh, usually more on the, uh, not on the content creation side from the creative perspective or content management uh, side when it comes to management of recorded content. We are more on the technical side. Uh, and a big misconception is um, also with kids watching lots of content in the internet and YouTube videos and so on, that most of the content is produced on a pretty high level. So there are good cameras, good AV equipment and professional one. And uh, if you uh, watch uh, some YouTube videos, they are, uh, the production also is pretty professional. So there's a misconception that uh, this doesn't uh, matter any anymore. So you still need uh, good AV uh, equipment, a good camera, good light, exactly. good sound. Uh, and so uh, this will stay how the content is handled then in the end and how the, the this is provided this is a different story so what i wanted to say is that this is a misconception that everyone can run around with an iphone now and and recording lectures nobody wants to see this so the the amount of content will be more and the management is pretty important and i see a high demand for still uh the high quality uh, AV equipment. 
So that's okay. my uh, point of yeah. view. Less the, the, the well, uh, no, definitely a good point, uh, Andreas, and I can I can I can I completely agree with you. Uh, I think um, uh, it's tempted to say, well, just just let's use something very very cheap and just fix the problem while you should kind of just think a little bit more about okay what it's going to produce and how can i use it in the future and how long is this product going to be usable for me uh, i think that's a very so key if element if the content gets more you still have to stick out that the the people watch your content yeah and there the the, the the creative part has to be uh good but also the technical recording parts so this is okay. um, more important than ever the more the content gets okay well, Andreas, thank you for that. Uh, Andreas, I wanted to thank you for, uh, for, for joining me today. Uh, Piotr, also thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to wrap up this webinar. We've taken a lot of time. Guys, thank you so much. Um, the future of education. We spoke about a lot of different things. Uh, just to kind of summarize, education is a very dynamic part of uh, the AV market, heavily influenced by COVID, and it changed the way of teaching almost overnight. Uh, facilities that not, did not have any hybrid learning as a focus are now catching up very fast. Um, and cameras, of course, the ones that Avonlink provides, contribute greatly to this online hybrid and high flex learning. So we're uh, positioned very good. And don't forget about high schools or even elementary schools because they've got kind of the same challenges. Um, to wrap up this webinar, uh, of course, we will follow up with you. You'll get a follow up webinar, a follow up email from us uh, soon uh, with any questions that were asked in the chat windows. Thanks for those questions. Uh, and also, if you want to know more about the AV Show or want to book an appointment, please go to avshow.online until the 12th of February. Uh, our team is available for you. Thank you for joining, and I wish you a great day.